next passage we want to look at. So this is also another explicit passage that that um, that describes the covenant of of creation, the covenant of works. This is incredibly important, brothers and sisters, because if this covenant is still in place, then when you preach the gospel, so this is we're we're going to just briefly discuss on. Of, let's think about this evangelistically. We have theologically. We're going to look at this briefly. We can look at this. We can look at this theolo- uh, theologically, uh, evangelistically. We can also look at this biblical theologically. And I'll share what I mean by that in a moment. And then also practically. What are the implications for this? Now, obviously, evangelistic is connected with practical. So there's a close relationship here. But look at this here now. So this is Isaiah 24, um, larger context. This is the this is a, a coming eschatological. So when I say eschatological, I'm just saying end time, end time judgment. Es- eschatolog- eschatological just means end times. Okay, last times. Eschato- eschatos means last time. So end time judgment. All right. So so look at this. So then I would you should read this in broader context on your own. Earth shall be utterly empty and utterly plundered, for the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourns and withers. The world languishes and withers. The highest people of the earth languish. The earth lies defiled under its inhabitants. They have transgressed the laws, violated the statutes, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse devours the earth and its inhabitants suffer guilt. Yeah, that's so interesting. So, okay. So, okay. So let's look here for a second here. All right. So let's just work through this. All right. So number one, we have, we've looked at this before. We're going to go, go a little bit more detail. The earth the earth is the object. The action is that of defilement to become this defiled means to be unclean, dirty. All right. The earth lies defiled, dirty. When did the earth first become dirty or unclean? Correct. Ever since man sinned, He's been polluting the earth, okay? And then look at this here. Who is, the, who is the actual actor that's causing this defilement? The actor is actually the inhabitants of the earth. So not only has man corrupted the earth with his sin, he's brought about the curse. So this is now, this is now earth dwellers. Earth dwellers, or we could say humanity. Go look for this terminology in Revelation. It's all over there. <laughs> check out check out inhabitants of the earth in Revelation. And that's you can you begin to see the correlation between those in the church, those in the, those those saints and earth dwellers. This is probably the this is probably the root place from where from where it comes from. Inhabitants of the earth, they're the ones who have corrupted it, okay? And look at this here. We have a a reason. There's a reason why have why is this corrupted they so this is the action they've transgressed the laws they violated the statutes they've broken the everlasting covenant so strong so malakas so brang lakas right so brang lakas now notice this this is this is plural. This is plural. This is a time reference. Okay? So this cannot be referring to the Mosaic law because the inhabitants are not Israel. These, this here is Gentiles. What, what I would say, it's Gentiles and Jews. It's all of them. All of those that are not believers. Okay? So that's the first point. The second point is that there, this is this is a plural. This is this is plural. So this is more than one law, more than one statute. So even going back to Genesis and just looking at one commandment, 
although there's an accent on the one commandment for not eating of the of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to only say there's one command without punishment or judgment behind it is to miss the point so what i'm trying to get at brothers and sisters is we're going to look look in genesis but there's more than one command in genesis 1 and 2 and so obviously adam broke the law of eating of the fruit but if he had not properly obeyed the command to have to have offspring if he had not obeyed the command to subdue and rule the earth those are also laws that were broken so we're going to see multiple mandates that here now they're saying god is saying you've been breaking all of my laws within this everlasting covenant so powerful and so the only covenant and this is much more than the Noahic covenant because really the only institution in the Noahic covenant was you still had the multiply. There was the institution of, of capital punishment. And then there was the change in relationship with, with animals, but all of the marriage is not present. All of the, 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 spe the specific other details is, is, is not present as well. And so People will say this goes back to the Noahic, but I, I, I disagree. I, I really think that there's a trajectory through the Noahic. So if you want to say Noahic and covenant of creation, fine. Okay. But it's much more than just the Noahic is what I'm trying to get. So that this ultimate origin, the ultimate origin is the, the covenant of works creation which is still binding. So they're breaking that. Okay. And then look at this here. Now, and this is why it's clear because there is no curse in the Noahic covenant, right? There's just, a, there's just the blessing and the promise that God won't judge again with water. Okay. But look here. Now you have a curse that devours the earth. Does everyone see that the inhabitants are suffering? They're suffering for their guilt. Guilt is the acknowledgement of breaking the law. So I say all this to say, this is a very strong passage that supports a, a covenant of creation, covenant of works, covenant with Adam. This is Adam and offspring. So that's why the Westminster Confession says the covenant, the covenant agreement was a covenant of works with Adam and his offspring. It's so malakas, right? Sobrang lakas, it's there. So if we acknowledge later on, so what's happening here is just big picture here. You have Genesis 1 and 2 describing this is time. And then prophets looking back. Okay, is everyone tracking there with me? So this is time zero, time, this is um, time, uh, whatever, eternity. Okay. And so the prophets, and this is really scripture. Scripture is looking back using Genesis 1 and 2 as a foundation to then, to then teach about the future. Okay. Is everyone tracking there with me? And the foundation is a covenant of works with Adam. Has to be. Has to be. There's, it doesn't make any other sense. You have the curse. You have this reference to everlasting covenant, the breaking of laws, and all of the earth. I think those, so this is this would be um, in no specific order, one, two, three, four. At least four proofs. So malakas. And then within here, there's probably uh, A, B, C. Any questions or comments before let's, we're going to take a break now, but before we get into Genesis one and two, any questions or comments? Yeah, sir. I just want to uh, ask the, the few uh, remaining words in the verse six, few and few men are left. What, what's all about, sir? Who are the few men are left? I actually didn't look at that past. I didn't actually study this. So I'm going to shoot from my hip. Okay. I'm shooting from my hip. Like a shooting from your hip is like, it's, I might miss the target. <laughs> I can't aim. You know, I don't have the time to aim. So I'm, I'm shooting from the hip. It might, it might miss the target. Okay. So don't hold me to this. I, I'm, I'm really making, uh, what I would say is that within Isaiah, there's near and far fulfillment. Okay. So this is so my goodness. So, so this is Isaiah here. 
and he's prophesying to the future. There's a, if you can imagine mountaintops, there's a near and a far fulfillment. Okay. So probably in this, because, because the, the, the judgment of exile and radical change in history in Isaiah's day is going to happen. It hasn't happened yet. Okay. Jerusalem and Israel is going to be white. They're, they're going to be decimated. Okay. Babylon, the Chaldeans, then later on, the Greeks are going to come through. So what, I, what I'm trying to say is this prophecy deals with both near and far fulfillment. Okay. So I would say that probably this here is more on the near accenting. So there's going to be massive decimation. And the reality is that there's going to be few men who remain. So I would say that this here is, again, shooting from my hip. Okay, shooting from my hip. I would say this is the remnant. And we see that. Paul will talk about remnant in oh. Romans 9 to 11. Yeah, There's yeah. also oh. remnant in Revelation. In Jeremiah the, also. Jeremiah. Yeah, okay, there you go. D does that make sense? Uh, Are there not the elect ones, sir? Yes, yeah, so remnant, the elect remnant one? is elect. Yeah, so also Matthew, Matthew 23 and 24, right? So one is taken, one remains. And so that's really in judgment. That's really in judgment. So there's this cataclysmic judgments coming that, and there's going to be lots of death and few are going to remain. But, but yeah, so we could say remnant elect. Yeah, Again, this, yeah, yeah because the context of this, uh, the context of this uh, chapter is about judgment. Great question, Jesus. Great question. Okay. Think about evangelistic, right? Uh, sorry, we I didn't even look, I didn't even talk about this. Yeah, so we talked about the theological, we got the theological and uh, the biblical theological. Let's just briefly evangelistic. This this tells us right here, every one of us are doing this. So this is still pointing to the future. Every one of us are bound by this covenant, and all of us have broken it. And so this is the basis to then preach the gospel to say you have broken God's laws and and statutes and so what specifically uh, for everything else what specifically we would say 10 commandments love God love others and use this as a segue to then preach the law to them to say look you broke the law you are under this curse you need to repent and put your faith and trust. So this gives us the basis to then preach the good news to those around us. Okay. And it's not a situation of, oh, I don't agree with you. I'm just neutral. Here, it's not neutral. There is no neutrality. You, you are, you are, look at this. The, the earth is defiled under its inhabitants. We are, it's, are you, are you an inhabitant of the earth? Yes. Okay. You are defiling the earth with your sin. So, yeah. And then, and then this can go into uh, farming practices that are unethical, treatment of animals. Everyone's guilty of mistreatment of animals, sexual sins, economic sins, family sins, social sins. Oh my goodness. I, we can just go on and on and on. And so this is, this is a great up. This is a this would be a great text from the Old Testament to preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. So, of course, this is the emphasis on the law, and then the gospel is is the solution to this. Okay, let's take.